Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the solved problem based on the Norton's theorem contain AC circuit. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notifications. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. For the network shown below, determine the load current IL using Norton's theorem. We need to find the load current IL. So the network is available. The two AC sources are available. 10 voltage with 0 degree, 5 voltage with 90 degree. This is the load terminal AB. We need to find the current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor. It is termed as terminal AB. Here one inductor available J3 ohm. This side capacitor available minus 2J ohm. So based on Norton's theorem, this complicated circuit is converted into simplified circuit. That is current source in parallel with the R Thevenin. This is the load terminal AB. So the current source, this is called short circuit current. How to find the short circuit current? The load terminal is short circuited. Current flowing through the load terminal is nothing but ISC. Then R Thevenin is nothing but the resistance available between A and B by removing the all the sources. The sources should be removed and find the equal and resistance between a and B that is nothing but R Thevenin. Then we have the load terminal AB. So that this complicated circuit is simplified with one voltage, one current source, resistance and load resistance. Thereafter we can easily calculate the current flowing through this load terminal AB by using the current divider rule. So our aim is to find the equivalent circuit, not an equivalent circuit. So first we will find the short circuit current ISC. So the step one is to find the short circuit current. To find short circuit current ISC, short the terminals AB. The terminal AB is short circuited. That is nothing but ISC. So after short circuit, we need to find the current flowing through this short circuit. Now we will go, we'll go with the loop method. So we will consider this is the first loop. The current in the first loop is I1. This is the second loop. Current in the second loop is I2. So what is the current flowing through AB? I1 also flowing in downwards. I2 also flowing in upwards. So the difference between I1 and I2 is nothing but the current flowing through the terminal AB. I1 is current flowing in loop 1. I2 current flowing in loop 2. The commonly available this load terminal AB both I1 and I2 is flowing. So I1 minus I2 is the current flowing through AB. Now first we will consider the loop 1. right? So the loop 1 we have one inductor is available. So applied voltage equal to inductive drop. So 3 3J into I1 equal to 10, 10 voltage with angle 0. Right? So the voltage drop is 3J into I1. The applied vo the voltage available is 10 voltage. See the current direction here. Current is going from downwards to upward. Right? That is from negative to positive. So that rise in potential plus positive. Right? So 3J I1 equal to 10 with an angle 0 with a rise in potential. See the current is flowing like this in clockwise direction. So in clockwise direction means negative to positive. So plus. So from that I1 equal to 10, 10 voltage divided by 3J. Now we need to simplify this. In order to find the I1 value we need to simplify. So in order to remove this, this multiplied and divided by the term j complex parameter j so that 10 j divided by 3 j square j square value is minus 1 we know that j square value is minus 1 so that 10 j divided by minus 3 so that is nothing but 10 divided by 3 is 3.33 so minus j 3.33 ampere that is the value of i1 similarly we need to find the i2 value i2 value is this here also we have one voltage source and inductor is available. So applied voltage equal to sorry capacitor available. Applied voltage equal to capacitive drop. So minus 5 angle 90 degree. Why minus 5? See the current direction. It is downwards from positive to negative. So drop in potential. Here also clockwise only but from negative. From positive to negative. Going downwards. So that minus 5 angle 90 degree. Already in capacitor one minus is there. Minus J2 into I2. Right. J2 is there in that current flowing is I2. Now we need to go for the 
simplification of this value. So, I2 equal to 5 angle 90 degree divided by J2. This J2 is brought in the denominator. Negative got cancelled. Right. So, yes, 5, this 90 degree is nothing but J. The Here, we multiplied and divided by the factor J, but here 90 degree, every 90 degree is J. So, we can replace this 90 degree by J. So, this J got cancelled. So, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 ampere. Right. So, I2 value is 2.5 ampere, I1 value is minus J 3.3 amperes. So, from that we can easily calculate the short circuit current. Short circuit current is I1 minus I2. We already discussed in the, uh, in the network, it is clearly through the AB, I1 also flowing in downwards, I2 also flowing in upwards. Both the current directions are different. So, that I1 minus I2 minus j 3.33 minus 2.5 right this is i1 this is i2 so this is available in the uh, rectangular form that should be converted into polar form in order to get the magnitude and angle so in the using calculator you can directly convert otherwise this formula is square root of minus 3.33 square plus minus 2.5 square the real term and imaginary terms are squared added and take square root so that will get the magnitude 4.164 similarly angle is tan inverse b by a tan inverse imaginary term divided by real term so tan inverse 2.5 this 2.5 divided by 3.33 that is minus 126.89 right so this value is not correct this is imaginary term divided by this 3.33 divided by 2.5 right the value this value is correct but this value is not correct minus tan inverse b by a imaginary term is 3.33 real term is 2.5 so 3.33 divided by 2.5 the angle 126.89 so that 4.164 with an angle of minus 126.89 ampere this rectangular form directly converted into polar form using calculator otherwise this is the formula for magnitude this is a formula for angle this is a formula tan inverse b by a so now we calculated the short circuit current so the second step we need to find the thevenin equivalent resistance rth rth is nothing but this short circuit by removing the voltage source to find rth or equivalent r thevenin r impedance remove the voltage source by short circuit while removing voltage source short circuit current source mean open circuit so here one voltage source is there short circuited here one voltage source that also short circuited so rth is nothing but the resistance between a and b this is the terminal a and b see here at this terminal the current is diverted through inductor and through inductor and capacitor thereafter it is combined here so these two are connected in parallel because of current is divided, we can easily say that this inductor and capacitor is connected in parallel. So, R Thevenin equal to Z impedance equal and impedance is R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Uh, that is 3J into minus 2J divided by 3J minus 2J. So, that is minus 6J square divided by J. So, this the JJ got cancelled minus 6J. Right? So, minus 6J ohm. This is the Thevenin equivalent. Now, we calculated short circuit current as well as Thevenin equivalent. Now, we can draw the equivalent, Norton's equivalent circuit. So, the step th 3 is to draw the Norton equivalent circuit. This is the short circuit current, Z impedance. That is R Thevenin or Z Thevenin, then load terminal. The current what we calculated 4.164 with an angle of minus 126.89 ampere. The R Thevenin or Z equivalent is minus 6J ohm. This is the load terminal AB with 5 ohm as a load impedance. Now our aim is to find the current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor. So easily we can calculate through the by using current divider rule. So this current is flowing here. At this point current is divided. Some of the current will flow through this z equivalent some of the current will flow through the 5 ohm resistor so current flowing through 5 ohm resistor by current division rule we can find by the current division rule what is the current division rule so il equal to total current 
multiplied by other branch resistance that is R thevenian, Z thevenian divided by total resistance phi minus 6J. In current divider rule multiplied by other branch resistance. In case of voltage divider rule multiplied by same branch resistance. right? So, total current multiplied by other branch impedance divided by total impedance. So, that minus 6J divided by phi minus 6J. Right. So, this is given, this is the voltage current. Now, we need to convert this into, into the rectangular form into polar form. So, this polar form is minus 6 square. Angle is tan inverse B by A. Just now, we, cal we, we saw that how to calculate tan inverse imaginary term divided by real term. Similarly, here the denominator we have phi minus 6J. So, square root of phi square plus minus 6 square tan inverse minus 6 by phi. B by A, real imaginary term divided by real term. So, this is nothing but 36, root 36. Tan inverse is become minus infinite. So, this is square root of 25 plus 36. Then tan inverse minus 1 by 2. Minus 6 by 5 is minus 1 by 2. So, this is root of 36 is 6. Tan inverse minus infinite is minus 90 degree. So, this is nothing but square root of 61 degree. Tan inverse minus 1.2 is minus 50.19. Right? Now, we will go for the further simplification. So, these two should be divided. 6 divided by square root of 61. That is 6 divided by 7.8. Then minus 90. This is minus 50.15. So, these two are multiplied. I mean, these two magnitude can be multiplied and divided by 7.8. So, it is 3.1988. These two angles are multiplied means can be added together. Divided means subtracted. So, minus 126, minus 90 while going the subtraction this become plus. So, plus 50.19. So, that we got minus 166.69. These two angles are added and this angle is subtracted. Multiplication means angles are added. Division means angle is subtracted. So, finally we got 3.1988 with an angle of 166.69 ampere. So, we calculated the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. So, in this problem, the given complicated circuit is converted into not an equivalent circuit. That is, current source in parallel with the Z thevenian. Then, the, after converting this simplified circuit, we can easily calculate the current flowing through the load terminal by using current divider rule. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notifications. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.